Today's class, we're going to discuss the notion of partial pressures and how to find the density of a gas. So to find the density of a gas, we start from the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, and we solve for P by transposing the variable B, took out the other three variables. And then what we do is we multiply both sides of the equation by molar mass. And we get PM over RT is equal to NM over B. And if you look at the units of NM over B, where N is the number of moles, M is the molar mass, B is the volume of the gas, you'll see that moles cancel. This is moles, this is grams per mole for the molar mass, and this is liters for the volume. The moles cancel, so you get, end up with grams over liters. So when you multiply N times M over B, you get grams per liter as the final units. And grams per liter is the units of density. Uh, because these two quantities are equal, we can find the density of, the of a gas simply by multiplying by the pressure times the molar mass of the gas divided by the gas constant divided by T. And rho is the symbol we use. Rho is the symbol for the Greek letter. Rho is used to symbolize density. It looks like a P with a curly tail, a slightly curly tail. So the density of the gas is given by pressure times the ma molar mass of the gas divided by the uh, gas constant divided by the absolute temperature, that is the temperature in Kelvin. To find out the temperature in Kelvin, you would add 273.15 to the Celsius temperature. You can also find the density of the gas by individually finding the volume occupied by the gas and the amount of gas present in the container. Uh, and you would find that by knowing how many moles of the gas there are and how many, uh, what the molar mass of the gas is. We recall that when we do stoichiometry calculations, if you know the molar mass and you know the number of moles, you can find the, the, uh, the mass of, ga of, of, of a gas or any substance that matters. The molar mass times the number of moles, you'll have grams per mole times number of moles is equal to grams. So either way, you can do it one step at a time or you can do it all together at once. Uh, by using this formula, to do whichever, use whichever technique you find easier. An example is given of how to solve for the density of the gas in uh, the book. It's a practice exercise on page 414 on our text. In that question, we are asked, what is the density of the atmosphere? The question asks, is the mean molar mass of the atmosphere on the surface of Titan, Saturn's largest moon, is 28.6 grams per mole. The surface temperature is 95 Kelvin, and the pressure is 1.6 atmospheres. Assuming ideal gas behavior, calculate the density of Titan's atmosphere. So we did that here by inserting the values. Here's the equation we used. Density is equal to PM over RT. Here's the pressure at the surface of the planet. Here's the density, the average molar mass of the atmosphere. Here's the gas constant in the units of liter atmospheres for Kelvin mole. You'll see that atmospheres cancel, Kelvins cancel, moles cancel, and you are left with uh, liters and the grams, which is density, grams per liter. So the final answer is 5.9 grams per liter. I believe we're only allowed two significant figures. The next subject I'd like to approach is the idea of partial pressures. The idea of partial pressures is that the total pressure of a mixture of gases equals the sum of the pressures each gas would exert if it were alone in the container. And uh, uh, the way of putting this mathematically is to state it as a mole fraction. So suppose you wanted to find the amount of pressure exerted by oxygen in our atmosphere. You would find how many moles of, of gas there are in a container and then you would find out how many moles of gas of that gas is oxygen. And one, the, the moles of oxygen over the mol, total moles in the container will give you the mole fraction. And then you multiply that by the total pressure exerted by the mixture of gases to get uh, the partial pressure of the gas that you're measuring. That's what this X symbolizes. X, that's the mole fraction. It's equal to this quantity, N1 over Nt. We see that X is the mole fraction. Pt is the total pressure of all the gases. P1, P sub 1 is the partial pressure of a gas, any given gas. N1 is the moles of that given gas. And Nt is the total moles of all the gases included. 
So the mole fraction of a gas in the mixture permits the calculation of a gas's partial pressure through the use of the ideal gas law. This, um, this idea was the reasoning behind the use of pure oxygen in the lunar landing module when NASA decided to, uh, to send the astronauts to the moon. One of the decisions they came up with finally was to allow the astronauts to breathe pure oxygen, but not at a pressure of 15 pounds per square inch. They decided to let the astronauts breathe um, a low pressure atmosphere, three pounds per square inch, because they realized that the partial pressure of oxygen is actually only three pounds per square inch in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is only 21% oxygen. So uh, we don't actually need 14.7 pounds per square inch of pure oxygen to get enough oxygen. We only need three pounds per square inch of pure oxygen. And that's what the astronauts breathe. And it allowed, the, uh, it allowed NASA to use less material to build the lunar landing module, making it lighter and therefore giving it um, a greater range. And also, of course, if you, if you pressurize pure oxygen, you don't have to make the, uh, the tanks, the air tanks, as big. So that's another weight-saving measure. Uh, an example of a partial pressure question comes from page 417 of our textbook. It says, 6 grams of oxygen and 9 grams of methane are placed in a 15-liter container at 0 degrees Celsius. What is the pressure exerted by each gas and the total pressure? So here we see what I'm doing to find out the number of moles of, of the first gas, oxygen. 6 grams of oxygen, molar mass of oxygen. We, we recall that oxygen is a diatomic gas. We have 0.18 moles of oxygen. 9 grams of methane. Here's the molar mass of methane calculated. Here's the carbon. Here are the four hydrogen atoms. We get 0.561 moles of methane. The total number of moles is this number plus that number, so we get a total of 0.748 moles of gas. We find out the total pressure by using the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, and rearranging for pressure. Total pressure is P, P, uh, P sub T is equal to nRT over P, so we simply transpose the variable under the nRT. We enter all the numbers, we enter the total number of moles that we just calculated over here. The gas constant, 0.08205 liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole the absolute temperature in Kelvin and the volume of the vessel, we get a total pressure of 1.1177. So we report it to three decimal, uh, to uh, three significant figures, 1.12 atmospheres. Then we continue our calculation with this number because we don't want to introduce rounding error. And the partial pressure of oxygen is equal to the moles of oxygen present, which we calculated over here, divided by the total moles of all the gases present in the mixture times the total pressure. So the, this is the mole fraction part, this is the total pressure, and it will give us the partial pressure of oxygen, which is 0.37 atmospheres. We're allowed three significant figures, so the final answer is 0 0.373 atmospheres. Now there's two ways we can find the partial pressure of methane. We can simply subtract this number from the total pressure, or we can find the partial pressure of methane, sorry, we can find the mole fraction of methane and multiply it by the total pressure to get 0.744 atmospheres. Either way, you should get the same answer.